actually to the church for just a little clip of the message on powerful praying 13. Uh, we just just want to get this principle into your heart because it was such a revelation to me uh, concerning the Lord's Prayer and uh, the whole message is available to you on CD. Uh, if you like you can contact us on our website and we'll get you the message. Uh, on CD, but we'll give you a little summary of the message here in a moment. Let's first go just to the church and get a quick little clip of, of the message, only two or three minutes. We didn't have the lighting uh, there for it, and so just two or three minutes of the sermon itself, and then we'll come on and give you uh, sort of the gist of the sermon that you can enjoy this newfound principle of prayer in your life. And I, I trust God will bless it to you. So he's going to get up and give me the three loaves of bread and go back to sleep. I know he will. That's why I'm going to beat on the door until he does. And you've got to come to God and say, God, I'm here. And my life depends on it. I'm going to seek you. I'm going to pray and call on your name until it's no longer any use to do so. My life is gone like George Mueller. And I'll call to my dying breath on you. I won't quit because I'm going to pray and pray. But I believe you hear. I believe you answer. And I believe you will answer my prayer. If it is a prayer in the will of God. Amen. Amen. I have preached on the Lord's Prayer. I have felt that there was somehow a, a, a clue, a secret, a formula in the Lord's Prayer that would, would teach us uh, how to be powerful in our prayers. I have preached on it many, many times. I have heard other ministers preach on the Lord's Prayer many times. Remember even when I was a boy that our whole town had a great uh, week of prayer and uh, different ministers preached in the different churches about prayer. My dad was one of those ministers, and I was just a boy at the time, and he preached on one of the clauses of the Lord's Prayer. And so this week, uh, I was preparing the message. Uh, it's actually entitled, uh, Where Art Thou? God's Question to Man. And then I wanted to turn the question around and uh, ask the question we often ask, God, in my troubles, in my difficulties, uh, where were you? And so where art thou, O God? In other words, dealing with prayer. And so uh, I, I worked all week on it and, and, and so on. But uh, when I came to early Sunday morning to put the finishing touches on my message, I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me and say, the answer to prayer is not in the Lord's Prayer. There's no secret in the Lord's Prayer. There's no magic formula in the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer, our Father which art in heaven, that is simply uh, an outline of some of the things that we ought to pray for, some of the categories we pray for, forgive us our sins, uh, forgive those that trespass against us, give us our daily bread, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven and all that. But that's not the secret to how to pray. The secret, the teaching of about prayer that's so essential is what follows the Lord's Prayer in the 11th chapter of Luke. And so if you begin to read the rest of it, in verse 5, Jesus tells the story. He says, suppose one of you, um, you have a friend come to uh, visit you late at night and uh, you, you, you weren't prepared. You don't have food to set before him. And so you go across the alley to the neighbor and you knock on the neighbor's door. Well, it's after midnight. And uh, you say, arise and give me three loaves of bread because a friend has uh, come to visit me and I have nothing to set before him. So please loan me three loaves of bread. And you, so you knock on the door and the neighbor is angry and he's not happy. And he says, no, go away. I'm, I'm, we're in bed. My family's retired. Forget it until morning. But knock, 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 knock. No, I need three loaves of bread. Go away. Leave me alone. Knock, 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 knock. Give me three loaves of bread. Knock, 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 knock. Give me three loaves of bread. Knock, knock, knock. See, what, what Jesus is saying is that neighbor is not going to get any sleep all night long unless he gets up and gives that friend the three loaves of bread that he needs. Now you say, that's an awful story for Jesus to tell about praying as if our Heavenly Father doesn't want to answer prayer. He doesn't want to give us what we ask Him for. Well, you see, what Jesus is trying to tell us is that there is in us a flaw when we come to prayer. I have committed it. Probably you have. I have watched many saints do it. Uh, we will pray sometimes very intensely at a for a moment or for a, a day 
on some issue, something we want, and then maybe a couple of weeks later, we've forgotten all about it. We don't even pray about it anymore. Think about it. For example, I've seen people lay on the floor and cry and pray, God, send revival to my church three weeks later. They didn't care enough about their church to even be there on Sunday. And maybe they weren't there for one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five. Some I've seen them go maybe six weeks and not even show up. And yet they were there, oh, God, send revival to my church, send revival to my church. See, they didn't mean it. That's why Jesus said, when you pray, it's like going to your neighbor, knocking on the door at midnight saying, give me three loaves of bread, and you won't go home and quit until you get the three loaves of bread. You've got to pray until you get the answer. That's why Jesus said, number one, you've got to learn to pray with importunity, focus, intensity, bulldogging at your prayers, just holding on, holding on, holding on. Paul summarized it this way. He said, pray without ceasing. You see, but that's not the only clue to how to pray effectively. Powerful praying. That's not, by itself, that won't do it. There's a second thing must be put in there as well. And then Jesus went on. He said, ask and ye shall receive. For everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth. In other words, there has to be faith, believing, that if you hang on and you hold on to that which you're praying for, and it is the will of God, we can't do this if something is not the will of God. We have to determine that before we pray. If we're praying for somebody to be saved, we know that's the will of God. If we're praying for somebody to be healed, we know that's the will of God. Jesus healed all that came to him. Somebody says, well, maybe it's not the will of the Lord for you to heal. Well, maybe, maybe. But the point is we can't, we can't live on that basis. We have to believe that the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. Jesus prayed for many people, and we don't have a single example in the Bible where Jesus ever said to someone, it's not the will of the Lord for you to be healed. You must go home sick. He healed all that came to him. And so that leads us to believe that it's the will of God to heal. So we've got to pray. We've got to pray with opportunity. But the second thing is we've got to pray with faith, believing that God is going to give the answer if we are faithful in our praying. And so that's why the Bible says, He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I gave in the message the story of George Mueller and his prayer for his five friends. It's a fabulous story which illustrates the importance of importunity and focus in prayer and hanging on to God till you get the answer, believing that it's got to come. I won't repeat the story here. You can get it on the CD. But friend, begin to put into practice these two amazing principles of prayer and I believe you will find out that you can have powerful praying if you do these things. God bless you. Our Father. 